Thank you for joining us for another spirit-filled message from Dr. Abel Damina. Here on this channel, we transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. We hope that this message is a blessing to you as you take time to listen and discover the divine truth. Now, let's go into the message. Now, supplication means to have a fixed petition. The word desis in the Greek, D-E-E-S-I-S, a fixed petition or a very definite petition. In the first service, I also communicated that prayer for things majorly are in the four Gospels. When you come into the epistles, the emphasis is supplication. The prayers of Paul, I cease not to pray for you always. That's supplication. To pray for you always, making mention of you in my prayers. That's a prayer of supplication. That's the same prayer I prayed for the church in Philippi. In Philippians chapter 1 verse 9 to 11. Same prayer I prayed for the church in Colossae. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 to 11. Same prayer I prayed for the church in Ephesus. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 to 20. It was all prayers of supplication. The only two prayers that look like prayer for things in the epistles is Philippians chapter 4. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, let your request be known unto God. That's the only scripture. The other one is really not things, even though it sounds like things. Third John, you beloved, that I pray above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospered. When we, when we do exegesis on that verse, you will discover that he's really not talking about things when he was praying, uh, when Brother John was praying for the saints in Todd John. So the prayer of supplication, which is major in the epistles, which is actually the prayer of a believer majorly, is this is a fixed petition, very definite. It was used in ancient Greek for those who write ancient Greek. You write a petition and you bring it before a judge. And then you accompany it with certain rights and privileges that are involved. A thought through application fixed. A thought, a thought through application fixed. So in your speaking, you are speaking like a lawyer in supplication. The prayer of supplication is a prayer where you speak like a lawyer. A fixed petition. A fixed demand. In prayer, it's like you are arguing a case. Saying why this must happen. Contending amongst men. Where men have authority. So when I'm making supplication, I am making supplication where men have authority. Either by their accepting it or by their cooperation, or by their action. So petition will cause men to accept what you want, or cooperate with what you want, in the prayer of supplication. Because you are dealing with men in that prayer. And don't forget, I've already told you, God never gave you authority over man's will. So that's why in supplication, it, you have to prevail. It's not just a touch and go prayer. It's not even a prayer of I receive. It's praying always. It's a fixed demand that you stay with. You stay with until you see the results. That's a prayer of supplication. Now, Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says, put it up for me. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Let your request be made known unto God with thanksgiving, which is the lifestyle of the believer. Thanksgiving, that's how we live. And Mama admonished us in the first service on that. We live lives of thanksgiving. We are always a thankful people. We are thankful all the time. We express it all the time. We don't pretend about it. And on Wednesday, I told you, if you are not into thanksgiving, you will give room to complain and murmuring, and complain and murmuring gives room to the devil. The devil comes in to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So it's critical that you are giving to thanksgiving. Now, the word request and supplication are the same thing. Request and supplication means the same. 
So that means the prayer is supplication. It's not prayer plus supplication. The prayer of supplication, supplication itself is prayer. Supplication itself. That is, in the prayer, what you are doing is supplicating. Let your request be made known unto God. Now get to First Timothy chapter 2 verse number 1. First Timothy chapter 2 verse number 1. I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. I beg you pay attention to the things I'm going to be teaching in the next one hour. Pay very good attention. It will change your life. First of all, means order. First of all, prayers. The word first of all in that scripture means order. That is, at the first reading, you will think he is talking about three kinds of prayer. Put it up again for me. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. I exhort therefore that first of all, the word first of all there means order. Supplications, prayers, intercession. You will think he's talking about three different prayers. And giving of thanks be made for all men. He is actually still teaching supplication. All those adjectives are all supplication. The word prayers there is the word prosecute in the Greek. P-R-O-S-E-U-C-H-E. -S -E. That's the word prayers in that particular context. Again, remember, I have taught you that no word of scripture has a generalized application. Every word is only understood within context. So prayer in this scripture is not prayer in another scripture. Okay, so that's why even the Greek word for the word prayer here is different from the other word disease. See that? This is P-R-O-S-E-U-C-H-E. It's used for entering to pray, like to desire to pray, like saying, want to pray. You know, some translation have put it to enter to pray, to enter to pray. Then intercession there is the work of Christ. We don't intercede. No man can intercede for you. In some churches, they have intercessory group. Well, you don't blame them. It's because they do not understand the word intercession. In Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25, it tells us that intercession is the work of Christ. Put it up. Hebrews 7.25. Pay attention. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25. Wherefore, he is able to save to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. So intercession is the work of Christ. No man is your intercessor. Christ is the intercessor. Because intercession what there was wrongly used by King James Version. Actually, it was wrongly picked by the King James Version. And I will tell you why. The word intercession here was used by Paul later on in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 5. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse number 5. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Sanctified by the word of God and prayer. And that word there is the word E-N-T-E-U-X-I-X. -E it is used in approaching a king. And the reason why King James Version used intercession here is because it is used for approaching a king like supplication. But when Paul used it in that first Timothy 4, 5, he used it as petition. To petition, to ask for something in a fixed way. To petition or to ask for something in a fixed way. So I submit to you that what Paul was doing in first Timothy 2 was describing petition. Intercession is not prayer. Intercession is the work of Christ where man's sins are concerned. What Jesus did concerning sin is called intercession. What Paul was doing there is describing a prayer of supplication. Again, 
what Jesus did concerning sin as the high priest, he ever lived to make intercession. Then 1 Timothy 4, 5, it is sanctified by the word of God and petition and prayer. So Paul definitely was teaching prayer and supplication in this context. Now Romans chapter 8 verse 34. Let's see intercession again as the work of Christ. Just like Hebrews 7 25. Who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died. Yea rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of God. Who also maketh intercession for us. So intercession is the work of Christ. Intercession is not prayer. So when you read 1 Timothy chapter 2, he now explains it further. Put up for me again, 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1. Let me read to verse 4. I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayer, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Next verse. Next verse. Did you punch it and travel from the system or what? For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Next verse. Next verse, verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man. See, one mediator. Jesus is the intercessor. He's the mediator between God and men. The man, Christ Jesus. Next verse, verse 6. Mm -mm. Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Next verse. I like the next verse. Where unto I am ordained a preacher. A preacher of what Jesus has done in his intercessory ministry. I'm ordained a preacher of the intercessory work of Christ. The sacrificial work of Christ. Is it getting clear here? Now, pay attention here. So, mediator is the same word used for the work of Jesus by his death and by his resurrection which means intercession will mean to ask for pardon on behalf of one intercession means to ask for pardon on behalf of one and this is what Jesus did <clears throat> Hebrews 7:25 you can write for further study Hebrews 7:25 Hebrews 11 verse 2, Romans chapter 8 verse 34. That's where you see the word intercession. You will also find that word intercession in Romans chapter 8 verse 26. Romans chapter 8 verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us, with groanings which cannot be uttered. Next verse. Oh, I like this. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So, that word intercession there refers to Jesus. The spirit itself. The work of the spirit. That is, the Spirit steps into our place. The Spirit aids us. So intercession for the saints is according to the will of God. Look at that Romans chapter 8 verse 34. Please pay attention. Romans 8 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God. Who also make it intercession for us he is using the same term the work of the spirit helping our infirmities interceding for us that the spirit steps into our place then verse 34 he is now using that same term 
which means the spirit aids us intercession romans 8:26 that is intercession is coming into someone's aid as touching prayer then romans 8:34 is coming to someone's aid as concerning failings and sins so romans 8:26 is the spirit stepping into our place as touching prayer then romans 8 34 is christ stepping into our place as touching sin and our feelings so both scriptures is still the work of christ and not any man interceding for any man am i communicating at all so there are no intercessors amongst men Jesus is the only intercessor and in prayer, the spirit intercedes on our behalf. Mm -mm. So he comes to your aid in prayer as touching your weakness. What weakness? By you not knowing what to pray for. You not knowing what to pray for is the weakness there. The weakness in Romans 8, 26. He is playing with words. Brother Paul Sunesis. So in Romans 8.26, he's talking about the intercession of the Spirit as touching prayer. And then the intercessory ministry of Jesus as touching our sins. He is not talking about the saints interceding. You won't find that anywhere in the Bible. That Christians will intercede for anybody. Intercession is the ministry of Jesus. So it is the same word. But looking at it contextually... Nobody stands on behalf of another to plead for mercy. That is the singular work of Jesus. So the translators in 1 Timothy chapter 2 put intercession instead of petition or request or a strong request. So it's a translation error. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 19. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 19 to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation so he can now be the one reconciling you and asking you to be the one interceding for people he is not bringing their trespasses to them Okay? So intercession, strictly is speaking, uh, you know, about Christ standing on behalf of us before God. Now, in the place of prayer, we don't intercede. We make petition or we supplicate. We make petition or we supplicate on behalf of another. We make petition or we supplicate. Now, in the place of prayer... First and foremost, intercession, which is the work of Jesus, dealt with our sins. Again, take note of this. Intercession is the work of the high priest. The work of the high priest. You are not the high priest. You are a priest. Jesus is our high priest. Intercession is the work of the high priest. The work of the mediator. However, in praying for others, we are supplicating. So in First Timothy chapter 2, when he said, first of all, or above all, supplication, prayers, he is describing supplication to you. So in my supplication, I desire to ask. Then in my petition, which is the supplication. So he is explaining what supplication is. I want to ask. I have a request. Then he said, I ask for that request in a fixed manner. I ask for that request in a fixed manner. So he's teaching supplication. Then giving of thanks which is in prayer be made for all men so supplication can be made for who for all men including believers 
So I can ask in prayer and make a fixed demand for men. For men. I can request for someone. We said it is fixed and it is heartfelt. It's not frivolous. It is a prayer that consumes your call. Heartfelt. It comes from your innermost being. It's a prayer that when you engage in, you forget all about you. You're lost in the prayer. And you are not giving up. You are adamant in that prayer until you see it come to pass. Thank you once again for listening to this message as we hope that it has been a blessing to you. If this is your first time on this channel, you are welcome. Our goal is to transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. It is your love and support that makes this channel possible. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel for more teachings from Dr. Abel Damina. Like and share our videos to others so that they can also be blessed. Feel free to contact us if you have any concerns. We will meet again in the next video on your screen.